Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Reminder, if you're traveling today or you're working outside the uh, the 806 or going to be, you can uh, take us with you on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's presented by Happy State Bank. And uh, look forward to uh, hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. You can go to double dot com for that on the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open too at 806-771-0973. Uh, Red Raider Two Guns says, not Sneed talking somebody off the ledge. I know that's <laughs> that is a little bit different, isn't it, Chris? Me talking somebody off the ledge? Yeah. Did that, yeah. Does that you, mean that I have to be talked off the ledge a lot? I don't uh, be talked off the ledge. Okay, occasionally. I, think I don't occasionally. think so. I I, I always kind of think of myself as, uh, you know, um, I I like the way that Choice Woodman puts it. I'm a I'm a pre coper. You're a pre what? A pre coper. I I, I pre cope. <laughs> you know, you, you and you and Choice have gotten into some strange conversations, and and that just it just it just. I, I wasn't sure about yesterday. Uh, I mean, that was. What are you talking about? That was a little, little bizarre when he said that he wanted to touch you. I mean, this is like, was like, like I, I was wearing, a, I was wearing a textured shirt, and he said he wanted uh-huh. to touch it, and I said, yeah. "Feel free to touch the shirt." I know. Sometimes when. You kind of walk into the middle of a conversation. I mean, just, it just it just seems kind of it seemed kind of awkward. There, there was no, I, I have a, Are you are you in your hotel room? Uh, no, I'm. Uh, well, I'm downstairs. Okay, uh, I was wondering if you were in your hotel room and if you were if you were doing the, your your portion of this show was uh, was the big transmission over there asleep. He's asleep. He's he he is upstairs asleep. Okay. I'm 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 downstairs uh, at this uh, at this fine establishment, and I'm thanking the I'm thanking the good Lord for what I do for a living because uh, the guys in the uh, in the breakfast shop are all bundled up and look like they're going to be doing some outdoor work today. Mm. And the current temperature here in Stillwater is 25 degrees. Mm. So I mean it <laughs> it doesn't. I don't know how much money these guys are making, but no amount of money makes makes me want to think that what they're doing is something that any of us would be envious in in doing, just because it's going to be outdoors and it looks like an, it involves some kind of construction. Okay, that's not uh, uh, outdoor work. You know, I, I I've seen the guys. Uh, I've been there's people doing that all over town. It, it's, oh, I know. It's, I it's know. such a, you know, you just wish like you could say, here, you take out a warm coffee to each one of them and just say that, but there's so many people doing it outside. You'd spend the entire day just bringing warm coffee to people. Just, why I just want them it, to know in my heart I mean, that I want them to have warm coffee right now. Why, why is it this in the summertime? There are, <clears throat> there are lots of good citizens out there and people that will take, you know, cold water or something and they'll see somebody, you know, out doing some construction work or, you know, police officers directing traffic, you know, if uh, the power goes out or something like that and they, they go to their favorite, you know, spot and, uh, and and hand them a cold drink. I don't think we ever, I don't think we ever do that for the guys that are doing this in the cold weather do, or the gals. Do we do that? I, I've I never seen, that. I've never seen anyone do that for the people. I I have. I have. You have with the, the guys, yeah, the, and then folks inside our radio station. They've done that from time to really? time. They've taken out, taken out, you know, cold drinks and things to people that are that are out uh, that are out working. Absolutely, I've seen that. I guess I'm Absolutely. a terrible I've person because I've never, I've never done that. I've never even thought about that. Well, I mean, I, mean, it's, we, I guess I'm a terrible person. No, it's all good. <laughs> uh, okay, so elsewhere in the uh, Big Twelve last night, Iowa State takes down. Houston, welcome to Hilton Magic. Yeah, yeah, Houston. That's nah, uh, sorry, buddy. Fifty-seven, fifty-three. Mm-hmm. They take down the the Cougars. Do you still have a little? Um, do you do you have uh, a little uh, question mark about Kelvin Sampson or you know his indiscretions of what he did at Indiana and the texting and all that? Is that 
because that was if you look at it I've, in today's world it's, it's very minute yeah i've just gotten to the point where everybody's doing it i don't uh, mm -hmm. y you know yeah we'll bring it up but i mean are we gonna I'm not going to lose too much. Deal yeah, I'm not going to lose his sleep over it because, I mean, have, has our guy probably done that? Yeah, sure. Just our guy just didn't get caught doing it. Their right. guy did. I'm not going to lose a whole lot of sleep over yeah. things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just you know, short of him, you know, wrecking a a bus full of you know nuns on the way to the convent. I just, uh, <laughs> I just don't think there's a whole lot that these coaches can do that's just uh, out of bounds anymore. Uh, Baylor takes down uh, BYU last night, 81 to 72. Uh, Texas with a winner at Cincinnati, 74 um, 73. What do you think about Are Texas you... right now? And and uh, and, that, and that, it's know. an important question because a lot of the a lot of the feeling that we have about our team is based on our win at Texas. And now what we know about Texas is they've got you know uh, what is it, a 13 point loss, 11 point loss at home to us, and a one point row road win at a team that was picked in the bottom third of the of the yeah. conference that has a has a, a nice win at BYU but right I now way, it, I just kind of the guess, shine off of our win just kind of went down a little bit when I saw their their one point win at, at Cincinnati see I, I disagree because I think it to me the way it's it's how you played not necessarily who you played mm -hmm. and I think you were able to you know, respond last night and and come back um, off of a you know an emotional win, and you know have a. a I'm not going to say it was just a dominating win throughout the whole game, but I mean at the end of the day, you beat somebody by 17 points in the Big 12, and you know that's a that's a dominating win. And you know, um, I, I I just kind of look at it the fact of how this team is playing, the flow of it, um, the togetherness of it, um, the way that they share the ball, the way that they don't turn over the ball, the way that – you had five guys in double figures last night. So I'm not basing – I'm not basing how I feel about this Tech basketball team based on on the fact that they beat Texas or they beat Oklahoma State based on, for me, more about how they played and that they seem to be playing much better as a basketball team than, than the very first game of the year, which is always going to be the case. I mean, you're always going to improve, but it just seems like this team has improved with each game. Is that, is that a fair comment? I think it's a fair comment, and it's it's. I I, I don't think it's uh it's a it's a good practice to to take the first five games um, mm -hmm. of of a season and base your your feeling about what a, a team is on that. Uh, it, it's just like you couldn't get too high. Over the uh, the the exhibition win against A and M in Denton at the beginning of the year, that you yeah. you, you couldn't get too low when you when you kind of get run out of the gym by Villanova. So even though you really didn't, but uh, um, the 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 point being, uh, until you get to conference play, the non conference schedule is a is a is a time you're 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 trying out combinations, you're looking at pieces. And and it's pretty well established now that he is uh, he being Grant has has settled on a, an eight man rotation and he's been pretty true to that this year and I think barring injury uh, or or something out of the ordinary this is the eight man rotation that's going to take you to the end and it's a good rotation I think this is a, this is the, the best eight pieces and 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 it gives him it gives him some pop off the bench. Uh, no pun intended, but uh, he's got uh, uh, he's got some uh, some some firepower. He's got some defense. He's got some he's got some places he can go if he needs a, a pick me up. So I like I like this roster. I like this rotation. I like this eight man rotation. Um, and um, you know if it stays healthy, um, I think this is a team that could make some noise down the Big Twelve uh, race. Well, and the other thing too is you got to remember you're 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 overcoming an injury to Devin Cambridge, and yeah. you're expecting yeah. an awful awful lot out of him. And I, I think if you if you if I'm being honest with you, I think I think I felt like more of a buzz coming off of the exhibition win over Texas A and M than I did feeling like when you beat Texas this past well, week. Well, well, the the game over Texas A&M, you had so many unknowns. You walked into that yeah. game, and you, yeah. you had a completely – you had three returners off this team. You had a completely different roster. You had a bunch of guys that uh, that you didn't know anything about. 
and and this is the first chance for you to roll some guys out there and see what they could do. And 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 so the people who got to go and see it, it's great. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time for this day in sports history. Today is January the tenth, twenty twenty four, and with that, special commentator Chris Sneed. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, today is, what is today? January 10th, year of our Lord, 2024. Thank you. January 10th in the year of our Lord, 2024. Chuck, we are all going to make it. I was wondering. <laughs> I hold here in my currently nicotine stained fingers. Uh, this day's edition of this day in sports. 1945, Chuck, on this date, no one is elected to baseball's Hall of Fame for the first time ever. This would happen again late in the in the two thousands, um, when no one would be a uh, uh, was two thousand six. Uh, it's happened like six or seven. Times. Yeah, would well, this happen? The, the most recent time was like six. Well, about like uh, is in the two thousands. No one elected by the uh, the drunken sports writers, um, but the uh, the uh, the veterans committee did come back and and. Uh, have a have a class, and we had a couple of old old timers get in. 1982 in the AFC Championship game in Riverfront Stadium, Chuck. Mm-hmm. The Cincinnati Bengals beat the San Diego Chargers 27 to seven in the Freezer Bowl. Mm. Yes, God, that was cold. Yeah, do you, you know what was happening on the uh, on the other side here? No, uh, that would have been the uh, the catch. What's happening later that day? Was it on the sheet? Oh. <laughs> We don't need to talk about it if it's not on the sheet. Well, it's, it's not on the sheet. I, don't well, talk about it. I don't. Saying, no, I'm no, just, no. Zip, lock it. Zip it. Good. Wow. Zip it, doo Happened later that day. All right, 1986, Chuck. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar of the Los Angeles Lakers scores his 34,000th point. During a 124 to 102 win over the Indiana Pacers, he's the only NBA player to reach this milestone at that time. He holds that record until 2023, when another Laker would break that record. Do you know who that Laker was? Was it Kobe? LeBron. LeBron. The phone. Get the phone, LeBron. Do you remember uh, he he hit a, a sky hook on that, and then we had Magic Johnson hugging him up there. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. I, I I loved watching Kareem play. Those 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 uh those those Lakers were just they were outstanding. Did you watch uh, did, did you watch Showtime on the on, on the HBO? You need to watch I, it. I did. Did you watch <laughs> that? <laughs> That's just just FYI. A uh, spoiler alert: Do not watch it on your iPad on the airplane, especially if you're sitting next to a young child or perhaps a nun. Because you I, uh, might get surprised. I, was, I, I actually was watching that on a flight to Tokyo uh, <laughs> summer before last. And when a certain scene came up, I'm like, did I see that? Yes, did you I saw really that. that. You saw and that. I, and I, I scrolled back and I, I looked to my left and I and I looked to my right. The lucky lady was uh, across the aisle asleep. And the, the person, uh, there was an empty seat next to me. And uh, then I looked and I went, oh, you really can't see from side to side. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go back and look at that again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 1989, Chuck. happened later. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, LA King center Wayne Gretzby becomes the NHL's all-time leading scorer to combine regular season and playoff points. Four assists and a 5-4 to four win over Edmonton, bringing his total to 2011, one more than Gordy. And 1996, Jimmy Johnson announces uh, that he will be the new head coach of the Miami Dolphins. About that. Didn't go quite as well. The, 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 the bad decision that he made there that he probably regrets to this day is how he handled Dan Marino, uh, Dan Marino's exit. Yeah, from the Dolphins, he probably that, would that, that, that did not go well. No, but this, the salary cap era uh, really hampered Jimmy Johnson. He was, he was probably the last great um, – a player personnel guy of the pre-salary cap era. Uh, 2017, uh, 2017, Keenan Evans has 18 points in a, uh, a go-ahead offensive rebound layup with 14.3 seconds to go as the Raiders take down number 25, K-State, 66-65 to in their fifth win in the last eight matchups against ranked opponents. How about that? How about that? Uh, Chuck, it's National Bittersweet Chocolate Day. Okay. My question is why? 
Why would you Great want question. bittersweet chocolate? I don't know. Okay, born on this day, Rod Stewart, 79. Born on this day, the lucky George- lady would lucky lady would leave me today for Rod Stewart today. Okay, okay, <laughs> that'd be it. That'd be she'd be like uh, Rod Stewart called. Uh, you're out. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Uh, would she leave you for George Foreman? Nah, because I could cook better than him. Oh wow. <laughs> Seventy five. He has eight kids named George. Also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, born on this day, would you leave the lucky lady for Pat Benatar? No. In fact. If a Pat Benatar song comes on today, I change the channel. I I am sick of Pat Benatar. I'm I'm sick of her. Sick, 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 sick. Uh, hit me with your best shot. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, the Warrior is that? Is she doing that with Scandal? That Bang Bang the Warrior? I don't know. And okay. then that's what's the song? The Monday Night Football song doesn't? Isn't that one of her songs? I don't too? think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think hate so. myself for loving you. Yeah, is that is that is that her? A, is that a Pat Benatar song? Okay, yeah. uh, born on this day, Jake Delhomme. How old do you think he is? He's forty nine, Chuck. Uh, he, could, he could walk in the door and he'd have to introduce himself to me. That's a Super Bowl quarterback, Chuck. What did you say his name was? Jake Delhomme. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I, I Super don't know. Bowl quarterback Jake Delhomme. He didn't win, but he played in one. Okay. Okay. Um, Born on this day, former Texas Tech defensive coordinator David Gibbs. I always liked him. I didn't hate him. He's 56. Uh, dead on this day, still dead. Uh, former former All-Pro a, uh, Hall of Fame wide receiver and West Texan Don Maynard. Yeah. Played yeah. for the Jets. Played for the Jets. Yeah, he was from uh, around these parts here. I think it's uh I think it's from Spur, wasn't he? Somewhere around this, somewhere in the, someone someone tells us. Uh dead on this day, twenty twenty two. Um and on this day in nineteen seventy six, writer Thomas Paine publishes the pamphlet his pamphlet, Common Sense. <laughs> setting forth his arguments in favor of American independence. Common sense advocates independence for the American colonies from Britain and is considered one of the most influential pamphlets in American history. Credited with an uh, uh, uniting average citizens and political leaders behind the idea of independence, common sense plays a remarkable role in transforming a colonial squabble into an American revolution. And Chuck, that is this day in sports. Uh, Don Maynard, thank you, Chris. Uh, born in Crosbyton. Yes. Um, January 25th, 1935. And as you said, dead on this day. In Still 2022, in Rio Dosa, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, well, went to Texas Western and uh, played football there, and uh, was quite the El Pasoan for quite a while. After after it's, uh, he came back to El Paso for a little bit, and then I think he settled up in uh, the Cool Pines. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. 97.3.com. Some things from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. You can chime in too. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's presented by Happy State Bank. Uh, we get this. Raider power. Enjoy the win. One game at a time for the Raider roster that doesn't play much. Stay positive. Stay focused when someone fouls out or gets injured. Get ready to step in. You've got to help the team to go to the Sweet 16. Oh, Lord, pump the brakes. This is why Texas Tech's fall is always so hard. There are some positive things going on, but this is a tough conference, and you still have off-the-court issues. Do you? Is that is that Um, – wait, Chuck, was that the same text or is that two different texts? It's two different texts. Okay, okay. Two different texts. Uh, This, if you're left-handed, you should be able to catch it in your right hand if you've ever played baseball. Right, I played Little League baseball a long time ago. It's not like I'm playing catch – all the time so um but yeah so i i get it You're right so there you go um anyway so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens with this this basketball team one one thing's for sure it's ex- they're exciting to watch and they're they're fun to watch and and we'll uh, we'll see what happens on saturday afternoon yeah, uh, when texas tech takes on k-state play huh? two conference games i've got uh, 16 more to go and uh, yeah. you know um hey take them one at a time and um, and don't uh, don't play the next one before you play the current one. I know, but I, I, we always kind of we always look ahead, and we always kind of get excited. We as fans have the luxury <laughs> of looking ahead. 
we as we as fans can count wins. We as fans mm -hmm. can can go and and do uh, all the uh, scenarios, and we can we can do the way too early, mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, bracketology, the all those things. The the actual players that have to go out and execute and per, and participate mm -hmm. in the games that we all get to 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 do ahead of time. They don't have the luxury of going and, and saying, we're going to go ahead and stick this one in the win column and play yeah. the next game before that. Because, it, I mean, in some le in some instances, it looked like for about the first three minutes of the game that th this team was already, you know, maybe had already had thrown this one in the left-hand column and was already looking forward to K-State. And I'm not sure what happened, but something snapped them back to reality. And... They got after it. Maybe their coach, because he's he's not afraid to coach him. That is and, uh, that is true, and and and, and I, I, I like the I fact, love it. I like the fact that this team they seem to respond well mm -hmm. to hard coaching, um, which is which is refreshing in this day and age of you don't coach me. I don't like the way you've coached me, so I'm going to jump in the transfer portal because don't you know I'm a five star, I'm a four star, I'm a two and a half star. I can go get. Uh, I can go play somewhere else. You can you can't talk to me like that. No one coaches me like that. Haven't you seen my AAU stats? Uh, my mom and dad told me I was the best player on the court. I got Capri Suns and orange slices. Blah 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 blah. Hey, let's not criticize Capri Suns and orange slices. They didn't do anything wrong. They were just That's awesome. True. I know. That's true. I'm I'm sorry. It's um, not their fault that they are. Awesome. I, I know, but the, you get the point where I'm getting. This is this is a very much a me generation, and mm -hmm. this is a generation of kids that do not want to be coached very hard, and it's refreshing to see a group of kids that that can take and respond to coaching. Now, it's it's happening this way because things are going well. It's you know what happens when things are not going well, and you're on a three game slide, and um, things aren't working well, and 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 Coach McCaslin coaches just as hard. Do these kids pull back? Do they do they take their foot off the gas? Do they quit responding? We don't know that yet. We're in the first time uh, through the through the ringer on this, and we haven't seen how that goes. I hope it's not. I hope it's the former, and that these kids continue to respond and 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 react to the hard coaching. Uh, this from Jacob. He says, "Wow, a Sneed Hines." morning drive have there been any rants or major arguments yet no uh but jacob it's sneed s-n-e-a-d and heinz h-e-i-n-z just i mean it's misspelled both of our names he's I, not I, a candidate you know what I, not a, I told you Chuck. not a candidate for the spelling bee it's it's okay yeah I, here's the thing i have i have uh yeah this this is a year it's a year of chill i am uh i am uh <laughs> I told you my on my on my New Year's resolution. I, I bought a new book for Christmas, and uh, and I, mm -hmm. I'm starting. I'm reading that. You know, the, the subtle art of not giving a blank, and uh, mm -hmm. it is uh, this is life changing for me. It really has been, and uh, okay. I'm about a third of the way through this book. And uh, boy, I tell you what, man, it's it's uh, it'll change your life. You need to read it too, Chuck. I already know that uh, you don't give a blank, so it's I'm, okay. Uh, but uh, it's just changed my – yeah, I, I'm not getting too high or too low, and uh, it's it's good. I ride the roller coaster of life, and uh, I've read my one book already of the year, and, and it's been well-documented, Dragons Love Farts, and uh, <laughs> we, we've, we've upgraded from Curious George, I think, uh, with, the, uh, with the Phenoms. All right, Lady Raider basketball tonight. They take on Oklahoma State here in Stillwater. Tech is 13-3, and 2-1 and one in Big 12 play. They're coming off of a, a really nice win over Kansas on Saturday, 73-64, to 64, in which the ladies shot uh, 21 of 52 and 11 of 28 from beyond the arc and, and 20 of 21 from the free throw line. A uh, couple things that they're going to have to do tonight is they're going to have to keep Oklahoma State from, from uh, shooting the three ball. They're going to have to run them off the three. And they're high volume uh, three point shooters. This Oklahoma State roster is is limited. Um, they literally play seven players. Um, but the challenge uh, tonight uh, for the Lady Raiders would just be like, okay, can you put two and two uh, together and come up with four and you know step and repeat what you did on on Saturday? Chuck, uh, going to need another. Uh, yes. What's the what's the rotation for the Lady Raiders? How, what's the depth on on uh, how how deep does this roster go right now? 
I think you go. I think you go eight, maybe nine, because you're gonna. You have uh, you know Kyla Freelon, Jasmine Shavers, Bailey Maupin, um, you know, Ashley Chevalier, who's playing just just tremendous, uh, and then Elena Enrique, who had maybe one of her best games. Um, just the way that she handled Ty Jackson defensively for Kansas uh, on Saturday, and then Jordan Merritt had a, had maybe her best game uh, as a Lady Raider, and she is she's a sleek athlete. Uh, she's six three, a senior from Florida. She had nine points, had a couple of block shots, and then off the bench, uh, Logan Johnson has been. I mean, she's going to be a, a really really good player for you. She's a freshman, and then Jada Wynn. The transfer from uh, Colorado, she had nine points. She's uh, averaging almost 11 in Big 12 play. Um, and then and then two that can, can come off the bench in spot minutes and really help you, uh, Riley McKinney and Saga Ukin. And, and, and McKinney is just a smart player. And it's funny because when you look at – when you look at last year, the last time these two teams played was last February at United Supermarkets Arena, and it went to triple overtime with Tech losing 92 to 80. They got outscored in the third overtime, 16 to four. But the leading returner for the Lady Raiders in that game is Riley McKinney. She had 14 points. She went six of seven from the field and hit a couple of threes. And for Oklahoma State, their leading returner is Leor Garzon. And she had uh, nine points. And Anna Gret, uh, 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 let's see, make, make sure I have uh, Aussie, um, she had uh, just a couple of points. So th- their big returners uh, and, and our big returners are not returning. But one, one thing is uh, returning is uh, a big losing streak here at Gallagher Iba for the Lady Raiders. They've lost 10 straight here. And your last win was on January the 2nd of 2013. Of our travel party of 50 or so, yeah. whatever the number is, I'm the only one that was at that game. Christy Curry was the head coach. Not even Mark Finkner was at that ball game. So uh, it's been quite some time, uh, Chris, since you've, since you've won here at gallagher Iba. In fact, the Lady Raiders are 19-3 and three to the bad side um, since uh, since – February the 27th of 2013, because you won both games against the Cowgirls that year. But then you lost in the Big 12 tournament. So they're 3-19, and if you want to look at it that way. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I know what you're thinking, off-season? Well, yeah, because it's baseball's off-season. And that would be the world champion Texas Rangers. In the last two years, they have spent a ton of money getting in players, whether it be your infield, your rotation. You've made some trades during the season to improve that roster. But this offseason, they have been increasingly quiet. Supposedly, they're still in the market for Jordan Montgomery, that they're still in negotiations, but that deal hasn't been finished yet. So my question for you guys is, are you worried about the Rangers offseason's lack of moves? Why or why not? Um, I'm not going to be. I mean, the, the big the big piece for the Rangers is Jordan Montgomery. Um, and and first and foremost, I would say this: I don't take silence for an activity. And I don't necessarily think that um, – I, I mean, they made the big splashes last year, um, and it, they've paid off, obviously. Um, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest off-season signing I think you could, uh, you could say the Rangers got was uh, hiring Bruce Bochy. Um, he's going to be around again, that calming influence. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I think getting uh, – Getting uh, Montgomery back in the fold for a full season is is imperative. I mean, because as of right now, that's your that's your that's your ace. Uh, Scherzer's on the shelf till till June. Um, Degrom is probably on the shelf till well August if you get him. Woof. I, I I stand pat on that one. I stand pat. I was I only missed it by one start. <laughs> um, I, 
I I think there's going to be some um, some someone's going to step to step up that we don't expect. Uh, we'll see. I I don't expect the uh, the Raiders to let Montgomery walk without a fight. I think they're gonna they're gonna match whatever uh, whatever offer he gets on the open market. So uh, that's the for me that's the that's the main piece that they've got to get signed. I think you're you know at first base you know Mitch Garver leaving. Eh, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent. You know, hey, if uh, if uh, who did he go sign with the Rockies? Is that, is that what? Is somebody like that? Whoever went and signed Mitch Garver, great. Hey, those uh, you know those what those nine home runs he hit all year. Who he signed with Seattle? Seattle. I know it was West Coast. Uh, yeah, it's great. We're gonna see him again. I I'm not uh, I'm not appreciably worried about about Mitch Garver. Um. I, w- I will be uh, worried about Jordan Montgomery. That's about it. Do you have any, uh, have any worries about Martin Perez leaving? No. No? Okay. No. Yeah, I get, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy into what Chris is selling. Um, I think – and I think the other thing is, and maybe you have to watch how much stock you put into this, but just the, the, the aggressiveness of Chris Woodward and what he was willing to do during the season makes you feel like that – if if things don't get off to the start that they want, that they'll that they'll make moves, and it it felt like in the past that wait a second, hang on, are you talking about Chris Young? Chris Young, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay, Young. I said Chris you said Woodward. Uh, you said Woodward. I was like, that's yeah, you mean former Chris manager, Young. Mr. Yeah, Analytics. Chris Young. <laughs> Chris, Chris Young, you're right. I mean, thank you. But th- anyway, that's 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 kind of what my feeling was that if they don't get off to the start they want, or there's opportunities to make moves, he's clearly not afraid to pull the trigger and um you know when you have a guy like bruce bochi who's you know at the age that he is i mean he's he's now won four world series titles he'd probably go hey i I wouldn't mind winning another one and you've got a guy like him and you're gonna you're probably gonna be more willing to push some chips into the middle and and now that you've won one and you look at this roster chris you say well You've kind of got the core here to be able to win another one. So you're probably willing to, to make some moves that maybe previously when you hadn't won one that you might be willing to make. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, the, the problem you have is that as much as, as you'd like to think you've got a lot of pieces in place, you've got, you've got two-fifths of your, of your starting rotation on the shelf until midseason. I mean, now, the great news is if you can, if you can uh, – uh, manufacture or keep yourself in the race, and by by in the race within within five or six games of first place uh, by June, and you get Scherzer back, and he comes back to and he gives you some semblance of of what uh, pre injury Scherzer was, and then you get Jacob Degrom back in August. That's like getting two free agent pickups at the trade deadline, and so. I, I just you, you, you got to get yourself in in that position. The the problem is, can you hold out? Can you hold on? And and can you can you uh, patchwork it together to get to June, to get to the trade deadline when you get start seeing some of these these big pieces come off the shelf. So we'll see. I mean, I like I said. I mean, I think uh, I think this the you kind of got a little. You got maybe what you have to worry about is. Just kind of sitting back and still having too much afterglow from uh, hey, from last they, fall. You know, I mean, seven hundred fifty thousand people coming to pat you on the back at the parade. Uh, the first, the first uh, couple of weeks of the season are going to be an absolute zoo uh, at Globe Life Field. You won't be able to get a ticket. Um, I mean, it's going to be stupid uh, trying to get a ticket to a game for the first month of that season, and and really the first couple of home series. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just crazy. And, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Josh Young, he, he was in the, he was in the building the other day and, and you know, and you got to talk to him for, for a second. And, you know, it's, I, I can understand why the guy lives in Lubbock. <laughs> you know, it's, I can you imagine the guy probably couldn't leave his house in, in, in the Metroplex, you know, so. He probably gets to walk around in, in his flip flops with his hat on backwards here and just be a, be a dude here in Lubbock, and probably in some uh, anonymity too. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably, probably, probably so. Uh, all right, so that's uh, Jamie's question of the day. Um, 
Somebody thinks that Jordan Montgomery is gone, going back to the Cardinals. Saw it yesterday. I, I, I don't see anything. I, I mean, hadn't heard that yet. I didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, who knows? How much did he like living in, in, uh, in Arlington? I mean, did, did he bring his family down with him? I mean, the, the chances he probably didn't bring his family down with him. He probably lived in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are the Rangers going to make it worth his while uh, to do that? We'll find out. You know, do you think uh, do you think that the the Texas Rangers aren't a place that people want to go? I mean, the the two things that the Rangers have done they've they've shown that they're willing to spend money and they will celebrate mm-hmm. the dog out of you if you win. And it's it's playing for Bruce Bochy. That guy pretty much knows what he's doing. I think he's proven it. And the uh, the arch is overrated. Syntex <laughs> Hank says this. Uh, waiting for Snead to go off on a rant and tell the audience to go listen to another station. It's a kinder, gentler, friendlier for Snead this year, right? I mean, I, you know what? It's kind of funny. Um, I haven't told anyone to do that since sometime in November. Okay. And uh, I've actually heard Hacks tell someone to do that twice this year already. <laughs> Hacks doesn't catch any. Was catch, it or was it not David Collier though? Hacks that doesn't, doesn't catch count. any strays. I mean, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I've. You know what? I, I, here's the thing. You know, my represent my reputation precedes me, and I understand yes. that. I, I, yeah. I understand that. You know, mm-hmm. there everyone is kind of poking the bear, and they want me to go off, and it's just I'm just a kinder, kinder, gentler snake. You know, I've got a beard going. It's the off season. It's the whole thing. You know, it's kind of like Grizzly Adams over here. You know, it's like. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of a gentle guy living in the cabin in the woods. You know, if you if you're, you know, come on in. Let's let's have a let's have some chili by the fire. It's great. You know, here's a cup you of. You think warm, the beard uh, makes you look more distinguished or older? Um, no. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Dot com with Chris Steed is in for Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. We come to you this morning from our respective First United Bank studios and look forward to hearing from you on the H Flooring Center chat line. Go to doubletee97.3.com for that of the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open too at 806-771-0973 if you care to chime in for that. It is Wednesday, the day the work gets done. So the Lady Raiders will be in action with some work to do tonight. They take on Oklahoma State at Gallagher Iba Arena, historic Gallagher Iba Arena. I have not said that yet today. Uh, we'll have that for you on 1077 Yes FM tonight at 6, the tip at 6.30. Last night, the Red Raiders taking down Oklahoma State at United Supermarkets Arena, 90 to 73. If you'd like to talk about that, you certainly can, or uh, comment on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Tonight at 6 on Double T 97.3, it's a high school fan zone, our first edition in 2024. We will have uh, Friendship Girls Coach Trent Hilliard, Lubbock Cooper Girls Coach, Lubbock Cooper Pirates Girls Coach Jaden Isler, and Liberty Cooper Patriot Coach Morgan Glasby. That'll be uh, tonight on uh, the high school fan zone. So, and that'll be on, Jeff, that's on 100.7 the score, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. I said I said double T first, but it's on it's on the score. Also on the score, an hour from now will be Jeff Haxton and uh, David Collier. And Chris, yesterday, uh, I'll, I'll give Collier credit for this because he's the one I heard talking about it. He may have okay. stolen it from somebody else, but it, it, it's a, it's a it's a thought, and I wanted to just get your opinion on it because you know a lot of people are trying to come up with ideas and in terms of how do you kind of put some of the toothpaste back in the tube with regard to the transfer portal or NIL or just kind of what seems to be um, a mess with with college football. And and you may not think it's a mess. You may think everything's fine. But one of the things that Collier said was to reward players that stay four years by giving them an extra year of their NIL money and eligibility and uh, all the perks that come with being a student athlete. What uh, what's you your take a, on a that? A completion bonus. I'm sorry. A completion bonus, if you will. Yeah, yeah, a completion bonus. But you would reward them with an extra year of eligibility. So you would wait a second. They would have. You would, they would just get an extra year of eligibility, not extra year of cash. Yeah, they get they get everything that comes with it. Okay. They get they get everything that comes with it. They okay. get they get the chance to to stay and play another year and you know, and work on a master's degree or whatever kind of degree that they were working on their their NIL deals all all those things 
but I mean, they would just, they would have that opportunity to, to, I think the extra year of eligibility, um, matters very little. I think the opportunity to, to, uh, um, gain a, an, a, a, another degree means very little to a lot of players. Now that's not to say that it won't matter to some, and there are some that will take full advantage of that. Um, the extra year of eligibility because the, the players that know my, my playing career ends the day I run out of the tunnel as a, as a senior on senior day, they know that there are plenty of players like that. And, and there are plenty of players that, that have, have taken full ex, 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 um, advantage of, advantage. Of, mm-hmm. of, of getting all their, their school paid for walking out with a master's and in some cases a doctorate, um, those are the guys that that know that, but the kids that 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 their goal when they walked out of high school was to get to a college that would get them to the league. Those are the kids that uh, the only extra incentive that that would provide to them is an extra year of NIL money. That's and and it's the beginning, the middle, and the end of of their of their care about uh, a completion bonus, if you will. Okay, so do you think it's a good idea? I don't hate the idea. I don't think it's going to solve the problem. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, and, and you, you, the, the percentage of people that would actually take advantage of that is probably extremely small. No, I, mean, I think you're right. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I like it uh, just, just from that standpoint, but I think that, I think the number of people that would say, Oh, so if I sign with fill in the blank school, I've got to stay there four years and in order for me to get, um, you know, to finish, then and, and then they're going to say after two years, well, my coach got fired. He's not here anymore. She's not here anymore. So therefore, um, that's null and void. Uh, I should be able to restart this and go somewhere else, right? Um, that's essentially what anyway. we've created uh, right now. And the the fact of the matter is, there's no loyalty. Um, the kids are are loyal to the to their bag. And by bag, we we mean their NIL um, Mm -hmm. compensation. Um, They want to secure the bag. And the second they can secure a bigger bag at at another location, um, they don't care. You know, these days, kids don't care what their locker room looks like. They don't care what their uniform looks like. They don't care what the, uh, you know, uh, the the student center, the academic lounge, whatever, all these things that that students and, and schools spend a lot of time building up. You know, they don't care that there's a barber chair in the locker room. They don't care that you can go and do this and this and this. They care about one thing: how big is that bag, and how much do I get in it? And that's all. That's really that's really all this has has become. And the transfer portal is about. Well, that coach yelled at me, and no one's going to yell at me because I'm I'm this type of player, and I can do what I want. So I'm going to go to this school over here, and I'm going to continue to do that until I get I get what I want. Because you get you know we've seen the you get your your redshirt year, uh, you get your COVID year, you get your free transfer, and then you get your uh, your waiver transfer, which you. You're, you're, you're. I'm going to sit out, but I can follow waiver because I'm going to have to get close to my my dear old aunt, you know, Sarah, who's got, uh, uh, you know, a spadinkin her gazinkadink, and I've got to be close to her for that. So, I, I just don't want to. <laughs> this whole idea that you know we're all going to come out and we're going to put on for old varsity, you those days are gone. I mean, yep. it just, do you have it? Do you have a solution? Do I have a solution? Yeah. No, I don't have a solution. I don't. I don't have a solution. That the you can't you can't put the genie back in the lamp. I mean, it, we are we are here where we are because the NCAA is terrified of going back to court and getting beat again. And mm-hmm. and uh, until then, the the NCAA has allowed. Hey, you want to you want to have full cost of attendance? Great. You have full cost of attendance. You want to get uh, nil money? For for whatever, uh, sure, go ahead. You want to transfer a free transfer? Sure. You want to have a waiver transfer so you can go be your, be your dear old aunt Sarah? Great. The, this whole idea of a kid signing 
and playing playing four years at over five at a, at an institution, those days are super gone. You know who does that? The the walk ons, the scout team yeah. players, and those guys will come and they'll be there and they'll play there. They'll play there and they'll do that and they get to be they get the route of the tunnel and they do all that stuff. And and God bless those guys. We need them. But yeah, the, because people will be working for them someday. At, well, yeah, uh, but but the superstar players, the five star players. I mean, I love I love that we signed Micah Hudson. I love that. Do I think that Micah Hudson's going to finish his career at Texas Tech? The odds say probably not. I love that he's here. I hope that he's great this this year. I hope that we've taken good care of him. But you know, let's face it, the odds say that Micah Hudson is more likely to finish his career at another at another power five school than he is to, to to make it all four years at tech this has been the morning drive podcast presented by cantex roofing and construction check out our library of double t 97.3 podcasts at double t 97.3.com